This is Matthew Bauer of the Computer Science Department at Illinois Tech. This is one of a series of short lectures that I normally do on a preview day to give prospective students an idea of what our classroom environment is like. So these are particular lectures that I'm doing in my first year courses that are connecting the content of the course to more advanced topics in computer science so students have an idea of where they're going to eventually go uh, with their degree. So it's not just teaching the content, it's kind of showing them the, the breadth of computer science even in a first year course. So uh, th there's a web page. You can download uh, the materials for these different activities. It's in the description. It's on the, the slide there and in, in the description with these videos. So this question we're going to answer today, what is playing rock, paper, scissors and predicting words in email or text have in common? So I think you're familiar with the game rock, paper, scissors, trying to see, who, you know, uh, paper covers rock, scissors cut paper, so forth. What does it have to do with predicted words in emails or texts. So let's take a look at that. So again, if you go to the web page, you can see these couple handouts. These are this is uh, this is some work from the data structures course. So let's take a look at this first one, this Iocane. So if you remember the movie The Princess Bride, if you've seen that, it, uh, it's kind of a, a funny, interesting little movie. There's a scene where the uh, a man, in, man in black is challenging uh, the, the, the man who stole the princess to a, a, a battle of wits. It's a, one of them puts poison in a cup and then without the other one seeing which one, and then they have to pick which one it's in. You have to drink one and the opponent has to drink one. So someone's got to die. And all the, basically it's guessing who put the Iocane powder in, uh, which cup was the Iocane powder put in. So in the movie, it's just, of course, played once. But we could think about this as a very limited version uh, of rock, paper, scissors where you basically are somehow guessing something and one person wins and one person loses. So it's a little more basic version of that. So and when you play rock, paper, scissors, what are you really doing? Well, you're kind of trying to figure out what they're going to throw next based on what they did previously, trying to recognize some sort of pattern uh, that there maybe are, in, you know, subconsciously doing a pattern and then you can guess what's going to come next. So the more you play, hopefully the more you'll be able to recognize their tendencies and be able to win more often. Well, we're going to do the same type of thing. How could we keep track of tendencies of one person deciding which cup to put the poison in my own cup or your cup over multiple plays? Could I learn after enough plays which one's going to be next and so I could win more often? So, uh, and again, again, we'll see in the next lab how this directly is related to uh, text prediction in like texting and emails and things like that. So uh, there's a, a series of, of exercises here that happens to be in Python and you're going to uh, basically what you're going to keep track of is a series of previous plays of your opponent and then say okay if, if uh, if they previously played a two-one-two, and these are the one is my cup, two is your cup. What come? What came next? And you, you're going to keep a score for what come because you're going to play this multiple, multiple times. A one time it followed with a one, zero times it followed with a two, and then maybe when you play some more, a one-two-one, one, zero times is is followed by a one, twice is followed by a two. So these are little counts for each possible next outcome. So we're only keeping track of triplets, the, the three previous plays to predict the next. You could change that. You could say, oh, I think the pattern is longer than three. I'm going to do five previous plays to, to predict the next. So can we write a program that's going to basically, over a series of, of where did the person put the poison, and maybe we're, we're just doing a pattern detection of three, we want to count how many times what was the next result, and then eventually we can just go look up we have enough results, we can look up where's the least likely place it should go, and that's where I'm going to put it. Okay, so let's take a look at the actual, some code here. So there's a series, again, a series of exercises building there, but let me eventually get to the uh, interesting one. So here's a, a bunch of simulations we're going to do. So this one, this is the only sequence we see that kept putting it in cup one. And we're using a pattern length of three. And then there's an example where we're, their, their previous plays are one, two, one, two, one, two, alternating and using a pattern of length of three. Here's one alternating but using a pattern length of four. Can we do better with four or three? 
Here's a hundred alternating ones and twos and a pattern length of five. You can see there's these different trials. And so when we run this, here's this is kind of showing the result. So if it's just one, 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 and a pattern, pattern of three, the opponent wins zero times, I win six times. I learned the pattern very quickly. Okay, so in the following plays after this pattern, I'm going to win six times, I see the pattern. If they do the alternating with a pattern length of three, they win twice and I win four times. So I'm still winning more than they are. If you use a little longer pattern length of four, it ends up even. They win three and I win three. So you can see that the longer pattern doesn't necessarily always mean you're going to do better. It depends on what pattern they end up doing. So it was actually better for me to pay, play a pattern of three. There's an example, a hundred alternating ones and twos in a pattern length of five. Well, that one, I do end up to be a very, I win 197 times, they only win three times. So it seems like with a this pattern, it's better to have an odd number than an even number for my pattern length. So we can do similar ones, a little longer ones. So this is, again, this is the same repeated pattern of six things, one, one, two, one, two, one. But I'm checking for a pattern length of two or a pattern length of three or a pattern length of five. And you can see how it improves. When I use a pattern length of two, I only win, I only win 202 times, less than half. When I go to a pattern length of three, now I'm winning more than I'm losing. And a pattern length of five, I'm totally dominating in the game. So this is just an example of how we can keep track of a series of plays and then what was coming next with little counters and then predict future plays. So that's the first step. Now the second step is let's do this with words. So in natural language processing, uh, a sequence of, of w words, here we're calling them tokens, uh, is called an n-gram. So a sequence of n consecutive words is called an n-gram. So th three consecutive words would be a three gram and so forth and so forth. So here's some examples. So in this sentence, I really, really eat cake. I really, really like cake. You can see there's an I really, a really, really, a really like, and a like cake. So those are all the two grams, two words next to each other. We can also do three grams. I really, 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 really like, and really like cake three grams. So what basically how uh, your text or even typing words predict the next letter, pr predict the next word, emails, it basically is for your all previous texts and emails keeping track of sequences of words. And I'm not sure what the length uh, patterns they're looking at, but they're looking at a certain length and then using that to predict the next word. So here we can see uh, in, in the a three gram list, I is always followed by really, really, okay? I is always followed by really, really. But really can either be followed by really like, or really can either be followed, can be followed by like cake. So you can see we can make a little map of, if I see I, I only have one choice. If I see really, I have two choices what comes next. Now we could keep track of counts of these also. So over a huge uh, set of text, or a lot of interactions, we could have little counters on these. Oh, this happened five times, this happened 500 times, so we're going to go to the one that happened 500 times first. That's going to be the first suggestion. So we're going to basically write a little program that's going to read in a large amount of text, and then uh, starting from a random word, generate new text. And so, it, it, you know, the first word is going to generate the next few, and then the last word on that will generate the next few, and the next, last word on that will generate the next few. And we can do that with some interesting text, too. So, actually, let's move over to the code now. So, I'm going to do it with the uh, soliloquy from Romeo and Juliet, you know, from Romeo's soliloquy. I'm going to read that in. And then I'm also going to read in uh, the whole full text for Peter Pan. So it's large, you know, uh, Barry's uh, Peter Pan, the full text. And then I'm computing uh, these n-grams, and the default is length 2, but actually the one I'm going to do interesting, I'm going to do length 5 n-grams. So that means one word, what are the next four words that come? One word, what are the next four words that come? What are the possibilities for the next four words? So I'm calculating these n-grams, and then I can use that to generate a, packet, a, a passage of some kind. So let me show an example. It's, it's all the, the n-grams from, from Peter Pan. 
and it then generated a, pa a, a passage. So I was saying, limit it to 100 words. Generate me a passage of 100 words. It randomly chose one of the words, gnomes, as the starting point. And here's the passage it generated. Gnomes, who are mostly tailors and caves through which the phrase Proler Gutenberg is a registered trademark. Oh, sorry, that's Project. Project Gutenberg, so it's included in the text for uh, Peter Pan is that it's a Project Gutenberg thing. So you can see it does generate something that's, you know, kind of Peter Pan-like. I shall have fun, said Peter. So remember, this was a single word generated the next four words, and we got this paragraph out of it. Now, you can, it's a little more interesting when you do it with, like, uh, Romeo's soliloquy. So here's with, uh, uh, with Romeo, and it started with uh, uh, the random word it chose was glove, and I only picked ten words. Glove, upon that don, her eyes, and all the envious. So you can see it generated something that's kind of like a Shakespearean uh, uh, sonnet or a poem. Hand, oh, it is the heaven, having some business do. So it's pretty interesting that we can generate similar text by the author by just these five grams and a random first word. We're not her cheek, we throw the envious moon, who? So, so this was just a little introduction to how um, uh, those uh, your, your predicted text works on your phone uh, and uh, how it's easy, it's just in... In, in, uh, in our intro programming classes, we use it as an example. There basically was learning about uh, lists and maps and these different data structures, but it was kind of an interesting application of it that uh, generated some interesting output. So again, if you have questions about any of this, you can email me at bauerm at iit.edu.